Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Brook with Jim McCormick with agmarket.net. Well, in the grain trade, we ended Friday with corn and soybeans lower. Wheat futures were mixed and cattle came back pretty nicely. Hogs were mixed as well. All right, Jim, let's talk about corn and soybeans. Obviously, we're starting to see a little bit of harvest and maybe even hedge pressure from old crop. Yes, we're, we are definitely starting to see some hedge, uh, hedge pressure kick in. But yes, Michelle, really what's funny is it's not hedge pressure from the new crop beans and corn. It's actually hedge pressure from the old crop as producers continue to empty out what's left of the bins a lot later than normal. But they are doing it. And uh, I think you are seeing some of that come to market. And as it does, it's putting the hedge pressure on. And then what we're going to be watching as we move into harvest here is what does the producer do with this grain? Because unfortunately, by all accounts, Michelle, we've only got about 10 percent of the old crop of the new crop, excuse me, corn and beans sold. We can only store about half of that crop on farm. So roughly 40 percent of this corn and bean market is going to have to make a decision. Are they going to store, sell it right out of the field or are they going to maybe put it into some kind of commercial storage uh, situation? So a lot of decisions to be made. None of them are going to be easy. What are you hearing for early yields, Jim? Right now, the yields do look very impressive, Michelle. It doesn't matter where you are across the country. The yields overall have been at or above expectations are what we are hearing. Now, a lot of producers do believe the latter harvested stuff may be heard a little bit more due to the very warm, dry last half of the summer we had. But time will tell. But right now, it definitely looks like the crop, I would argue, is very close to what the USDA is saying, at least at the moment. All right. So that could keep some pressure on this market through harvest. Do we retest the lows? That's the million dollar question. I think, unfortunately, right now, I think there is a real probability we could go down to test the loads. Plain and simple, we do not have enough grain sold. There's not enough room to store all this corn and beans on farm. As we go in the latter part of harvest, I think that gets dumped on the market and that could push it back down and test those early or late summer lows. We are also watching South American weather as they start their planting season. It's been dry up to date, but now we got some forecasts this week that Brazil might be getting some rain. What are you seeing there and how much impact could that have here on the market? Well, right now, I do believe the market is actually holding quite a bit of weather premium in the markets on the beans, specifically, Michelle, due to the dryness. You're seeing record dryness in parts of Brazil, or most of Brazil, actually, for this time of year. Now, they are normally dry. It's just drier than normal. But if you look historically, statistically, the last two times Brazil was this dry or really dry in this time of season in 20 after uh, since 2018, excuse me, both of those years, you ended up with trend line yields plus. So the idea that they cannot have a crop, they, that they're going to have a crop failure now due to this dryness just should not be on the table right now. So what I believe is going to happen is we do start getting that rain in October and in November, which is traditionally what happens. I think you will start seeing the bean market bleed lower as the market essentially starts taking weather premium out. And I think that'll force the Chinese away from the U.S. markets, unfortunately, and start buying more and more Brazilian beans because we are ratcheting up to train tensions as we speak. No doubt. We should talk about the tariffs that the U.S. is going to be putting on China on EVs. Is that going to have an impact here, do you think? I think it's a real probability it could, because remember, you know, President Trump put trade tariffs on when he was president. Joe Biden, President Biden did not take them off. He's actually added more tariffs on and more trade sanctions due to computer chips. Now it's these EVs and it could have a negative impact when the Canadians earlier this month put a uh, the same kind of tariffs on the Chinese said they're going to start looking into Canadian canola being quote unquote dumped onto their market, uh, you know, so as a way to kind of retaliate for these uh, tariffs. So, yes, I think there is a real risk that this trade war could get out of control. And if you start getting better weather situations in Brazil and give the Chinese confidence that the Brazil crop is there, I think that is where the risk is to the downside, because right now, if Brazil would have the anticipated normal production with the acres we're anticipating, it would push world bean stocks to the highest on record and push stocks to use at the second highest on record. So plain and simple, a big crop out of Brazil, the world is oversupplied with beans. And at the same time, you've got China with an economic slowdown, right? That's not a good combination. Their economy, unlike a lot of other com countries coming out of COVID, which rebounded, China has been struggling for the last couple of years. Their housing market continues to struggle. And right now, we know we've been dealing with inflation here in the United States. It has come down, but it's still running to two and a half percent up to three in certain products. China, Michelle, is on the other problem. They're worried about deflation. 
And deflation is one of those worst economic situations you can get because what happens when we're in deflation, nobody wants to spend money because the belief is why buy something today when it'll be cheaper tomorrow? If that happens, people quit spending money. The economy slows down more as Chinese, but it's essentially, essentially as companies have to lay off people due to the lack of demand. And uh, you know, we know what happens is it slows it down. Japan has known as the lost decades because they went into a deflationary spiral and it took decades to get out of it. So it is a real concern because China is the big behemoth when they're buying commodities. If they're buying commodities, they tend to go higher. If China is not buying commodities, they tend to weaken. And the funds you think, have they shedded enough of their short position now? They're comfortable for a while or not? To me, I think that's probably a good good idea what they did. I think a lot of it, people, I think a lot of people thought they were getting out due to maybe what they're hearing yield wise and just seasonal aspect. I really believe it had more to do with the Fed. They were getting really, you know, they pushed that to the downside hard. They lightened up going into the Fed number. They got the Fed cut. Now I think they're going to wait and see where uh, where the yields go. And like I said, I think if the yields are good and we continue to see uh, the, you know, that stream go through the fall harvest and the weather progresses in Brazil as it normally does, I think you got one more shot down into the fall. I think you get that fall low in and that will start attracting some funds to go in and say, hey, look, let's buy some of these commodities. Let's buy some of these grains because let's face it, Michelle, we don't know what the weather is going to be more than a few days out. You know, we've got guesses, analog studies one month, three months out, but we just don't know. And, uh, you know, some money's going to come in and play the what if Brazil does stumble. Let's talk as well about the fact that it was option expiration on today or Friday. And so what role did that play here in the market? Well, the market tried, I think you had some, a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of producers, I would guess, had bought a lot of October $4 corn puts and bought some October $10 bean puts. They were the ones that expired worthless to professional people tended to sell the premium. I think they were trying to defend their position a little bit and wanted to make sure that these corn settled over $4 and beans settled over that $10 level to make sure those options expired, which they did. Now we'll see what happens coming in next week as the weather does look a bit more wet, but also we're looking for harvest to really pick up steam. Yeah. So we we're going to have lower weekly closes, sharply lower. In fact, were we taking out war and weather premium this week or what was the, what was the deal? I think that's exactly what it was. I mean, we tried to break out to the upside about a week ago on the missile that the Russians shot out, hit a Ukrainian boat that was going into late last week. They had the world really worried about what was going to happen with that, along with the escalation of would the Western countries allow uh, Ukraine to use longer range missiles that would go deeper into Russia. That put a lot of premium into the market. We came out, nothing really came out of that. And then wheat does what it does. It goes right back down to the middle of the trading range. Right now, there is the reality is, Michelle, there's plenty of wheat in the U.S., and that's keeping the market in check. But there is a wheat story that could be had. The world wheat stocks are dipping. They are slowing, going down. And then on top of it, we are dealing with issues of dryness issues on parts of the Ukraine, as well as parts of Russia, which could have a detrimental impact on the wheat they're going to be planting this fall. Right. So the cattle market, we had a nice recovery. We started lower on the day on Friday and then actually had a lot of contracts moving to new highs for the move with the higher cash trade maybe pushing us. But do you see us building on this? Because we've had a pretty nice chart breakout. It did break out on the charts. I think there's more overhead resistance above it. So I think we could grind a little bit higher. Um, you know, we got to see where the cattle and feed report numbers come out and how the market wants to view that. And then more importantly, I think it's just the psychology of the market. I think part of the run up this week had to do with the enthusiasm of the Fed cutting interest rate a half point. The stock market pushed to all time highs. Consumer confidence overall has been pretty good. Retail sales this week are better than anticipated. But, you know, to get into a really big bull market right now, I just don't think it's the right time of year. So I'd, I'd look for more of a sideways, to maybe slightly higher trade more than anything else. And when we talk about the stock market, obviously we pushed into some new highs here this week with this interest rate cut. What do you see going forward and what's the impact going to be in terms of money flow on the ag or the commodity sector, do you think? Right now, it was definitely a very bullish breakout of the stock market. Now we're going to wait and see what happens in the next couple of weeks. Remember, we do have a very contentious presidential election coming in at us. You get the quote unquote October surprises. So I would not be surprised to see this market back up a little bit. But overall, when you make new highs, it is definitely bullish. The real wild card, Michelle, is what is the money going to do on the sidelines? 
there is an estimated six trillion dollars sitting in money markets right now. And remember, the folks, the uh, you know, they just cut the interest rate a half point. So that money market is making a half point less than what it was last week. The anticipation is the Fed's going to cut two more times. And since you take another half point off these money market rates by the end of the year. And then the question is, what does that do? Does that force that money that's on the sidelines into the market and which market they're going to jump into? Right now, it looks like they want to jump into the stock market, maybe not the grain markets like we want. The reality is we'd like to see them jump into the grain markets. But if you're an investor and you're looking at essentially potentially record supply of beans in the world, a decent supply of corn in the world, is now the time to uh, jump into the commodities or just ride the bull market and the stocks that has been going for quite a while now. Well, lots of moving parts to the market for sure. All right. Thanks so much. Jim McCormick with agmarket.net. That is Markets Now.